Well, Rabbi Kahani has claimed that uh, the only justice that Jews ever had is the justice which they have taken themselves. Has uh, the ACLU in, uh, taken cases which uh, deal directly with some Jewish questions or Jewish communities here in the United States? Well, we have not, at least to my knowledge, taken precisely that kind of case, but that doesn't mean that we specifically exclude that sort of representation. Indeed, if there are groups, and there are groups in Skokie, whose rights to march against the Nazis are being denied because of the, the state of the law and the ordinances in Skokie, uh, we would happily represent their right to march in opposition to, to the Nazis. Well, couldn't the ACLU also represent Skokie against the Nazis? I don't know how. Skokie's position is that the Nazis had no First Amendment rights in, within the village of Skokie. It's our position that everybody in the village of Skokie and everywhere else in the country has First Amendment rights. But there's a world of difference between advocating unpopular ideas and carrying them out that all the Nazis intend to do in Skokie is to advocate unpopular ideas. Well, many people in Skokie, especially those from the concentration camps of Auschwitz and Treblinka and so on, have seen the results of these kind of ideas being carried out and uh, they're afraid that these ideas will be carried out again and uh, what would you what would be your response to this kind of feeling my response is is that i have some faith in the democratic principles on which the country was founded i rely on the people of skokie to reject nazism if that's what the country wants to do. Well, I'm sure that Skokie has no problems with Nazism. But that's exactly the point. The whole point of the First Amendment is that you hear those ideas, and if you don't like them, you reject them. You don't give them power with which to implement those ideas. Well, now speaking concretely, suppose uh, we're talking with a Jew from Auschwitz. How, how would one go about uh, convincing him that uh, he should allow a Nazi uh, party with their symbols and their, uh, whatever it is come into the neighborhood and parade? Well, I think the way, I'm not having any success at convincing them, you understand, so that I'm not sure I can answer that question. I can only tell you what my response to that question is. Um, and the answer fundamentally is you have to rely on the democratic principles on which this whole system of government operates. There is a world of difference between permitting a march to take place and permitting the marchers to have power. It's clear from any assessment, even that of the Jewish Defense League, that the Nazis have no power, that all they are doing is marching and making a great deal of noise. The whole point of, of democracy is that you hear all of the ideas, the ones that you don't like as well as the ones that you like, and then you accept or reject uh, according to what you hear. The danger in the, the, the pitfall in that system is if we stop one idea from being communicated, then we can't make the choice from the full range available, and democracy doesn't exist anymore.